I can watch your show, you can watch my show. We can always have a book club. Better have something to say. <laughs> Bonding over streaming shows. I love that. The days of literal water cooler conversations may be a thing of the past, but we have more conversations than ever about our favorite shows. And with the onslaught of streaming platforms, there's no shortage of choices when it comes to what to watch. In fact, it takes the average viewer 7.4 minutes to decide what to watch. By that metric, the average daily viewer spends over 45 hours a year paralyzed by overwhelming choices. So what happens at the end of that 7.4 minutes? How do we decide what to watch? Before streaming television, we didn't have a whole lot of choice in what to watch. Season premieres on CBS. Or when to watch it. All new Watchy TV Thursday. Friday. So it's no surprise that over 70% of consumers believe streaming subscriptions offer better services over traditional television. But even in the age of the algorithm, humans still play a key role in recommending content. And platforms like Netflix and HBO now offer even more tools that include streaming recs curated by humans. That's because people still trust other people when they want to know what to watch. What's TV done for you lately? What has TV done for me lately? I am a sucker for rich people with problems. <laughs> for me personally, it was the slap in this season of Succession when it stopped on a dime. I thought that was the greatest part this season. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, I, I think it was pretty clear that I was oh, talking no, about- No, no, it was clear, yeah. You tortured the old dinosaur. You barbecued him live, hmm? Don't f hey, hey, him hey. Right there. Oh my God, I do not espouse violence. I think it's bad in all forms, but God. Damn it, that was good. The scene for me shows that in a household, you can be angry with somebody, but somebody else gets the wrath. My dad was mad at my sister once, and then he threw a ham sandwich at me. I've lived a life. Oh. I've lived a life. <laughs> you might have me go watch Succession now. Please do. So I gotta say for me, the season finale of Handmaid's Tale, season three. There is this insane tension that Handmaid's Tale has been able to capture, where June comes up with this, this weird plan, get these kids out of Gilead. I'm here to help you. This is really set up on this idea that they're precious cargo. There's a lot of thought and intention. Just keep you warm. You gotta be cold. Here, what's your name? This moment, where she realizes that's her dad. This emotion with an emotion with an emotion. And then you have this moment. This is the one that got me. <laughs> Somehow they magically gave you relief while also keeping that elbow like right on the back of your neck. It doesn't get resolved. This is the most emotional baggage claim moment I've ever witnessed. <laughs> There's demand for better quality across the board on streaming devices. So what about you? There's, there's gotta be some unforgettable moments for you. So this season of Euphoria, it is about drugs and escape and dreams and delusion. Really happy stuff. Whoa, teenagers are doing this shit? This is right, crazy. Right, right. This scene is at a carnival in town. The space is reflecting their mental space. As we dolly in, boom, all goes into shallow depth of field portraiture illuminated by this crazy light show Very around smooth. her yeah. that is both the disorientation and euphoria of adolescence. What is it about these TV series that hooks us? Dramatically different settings and contexts and characters and situations, but every one of these things we felt at some point in our life. Universal emotions that make us all uncomfortable, a little on edge, and it puts us in the hands of, of the filmmakers. It is emotional, like it invokes some kind of emotion from us that attaches us to that moment, right? Right. What I do like is the shareability now of like, mm. of TV. Like mm. you can tell me about this and I've been on the fence about, about watching Euphoria. Yeah. Like I'm like, do I watch it? I understand like the makeup game with the eyes, the kids look super buff and I'm like, that wasn't my high school experience, but I'm willing to try. I want to see what the fuss is about. Right. And the same way with Handmaid's Tale. But I like you and I like you and I'm willing to give them a chance because of it. And that's, that's what's great about like shareability. And sharing our favorite shows might be the fastest way to avoid that seven minutes of indecision. Because even though the algorithms try their best, we still trust humans more often. And according to a well-known Columbia University study about choice, people are more inclined to make decisions when they have less options. Think about it. 
When asking your friends what to watch, they suggest three or four faves, not hundreds of options. So since streaming libraries only continue to grow, human recommendations are more important than ever, or at least helps you reclaim that 7.4 minutes of indecision from your day.